All right. So, what is the difference between a DPS and a DP? Well, the answer is not a whole heck of a lot, but some key features that will probably help in uh, deciding which one to get. So, first thing you might notice is when you first turn it on. Let's see if I can get this good. Right there. That's the logo. And maybe even the boot times there. Um, speaking of boot times, there's also the power off times. Takes about half a, half a second, maybe a second longer to shut down a DP. As you can see there, version 1.0, version 1.0, DP version 1.0. DPS version 1.0. Um, otherwise, layout is exactly the same. What it displays on the panel is exactly the same. How it has all that laid out. You've got your little lights, lights here showing the lockout, whether it's good or not, and which mode it's in and also the power state. Um, and then you've got the same, the same three button interface, the rotary encoder and the power off. Rotary encoder has a button as well. Um, but the one difference is on the DPS model you have what these are is a little bit different. In the old model, to, as you can see there, to change the voltage and the current, you have to go to set, and then tap over, starting from the highest current, or highest voltage down to the lowest voltage down to the highest current down to the lowest current. And then you spin the knob, bring them up or down. And you press set, and it's good. The other model, you get it, they made it a little bit easier to quickly set the voltage and the current. So if I press reset, you see it just goes to that, so that doesn't work. But if you do the top one, as you can see right there, it goes straight to the lowest voltage. Then you press the middle button, and then it changes around to the higher current, and back again. So you can't go by, uh, you can't change tens of voltage, tens of volts, you can only change one volt at a time, which might be a useful feature, or kind of like a safety feature, but could be a nuisance, I don't know. So yeah, and then set still doesn't do anything, but if you go to the voltage, get out of that, there you go, you can just press it again. And then to set the current, you press the bottom one. And it starts off at the lowest current. And then you press to go all the way through. And then they both have the nine preset modes. Or if you go on the DP model, you do that, enter that setting by pressing set twice. And then you can go in through here, set the different mode, whichever one you're on. Um, and you can also set 
which mode you're in, I think, by this. Not sure how you actually just change modes. That was mode one, actually. No. Oh well, anyway. I'm not sure about that. I'm sure there's other videos on setting the modes there. But I believe in this one, just to set change the modes, you do the same thing. Now you're in mode one. Now you can change Forget, forget about it. Um, so anyway, so that's some of the major differences. I don't know how to set modes on these things or bring them back pretty quickly. Uh, but yeah, then the next difference is the um, layout, I guess. Keep in mind these are two different voltage ranges. This is 30 volts, this is 50 volt range, which I can show you the parameters here, side by side. This is the 30 volt 5 amp. Maximum input, well, voltage range 6 to 40 volt input. Output 0 to 32, current 0 to 5 amp. Um, So, 40 volt input on the DP30V5A, and then you've got 6, same low voltage, to 55 volts on the input, 0 to 50 volts on the output, 0 to 5 amps on the output. Yeah, let's see, 5005. So, a bit higher voltage, but that's because it's a 50 volt model, not a 30 volt model. Um, and then I guess really the last difference would be the um, whether or not you can charge batteries with it. Um, the DP 30 volt model has a diode here in series with the output. So the um, buck converter, I think it's this diode, it might just be, that might just be the um, the buck converter diode, but I think it's the output diode because it has to handle 5 amps so it's got to be pretty big. I think the actual buck converter diode is that one right there between the heatsink and the capacitors, right there. So, um, so because these are synchronous devices, where they push and pull current from the inductor, um, it will sync current if you set the voltage to either off or lower than your battery. So you need to have a diode in between. So this is, so the uh, 50 volt, or the 30 volt, the DP30V5A has that included. So you can charge up uh, batteries with this directly. The DPS, 50 volt at least, has to have a output diode. As you can see, Everything's a bit smaller 
Um, well, except for the capacitors. <laughs> but there you can, I think that's the buck converter diode, same as on the other one. And then the MOSFETs, I believe, are under that heat sink right there. Um, so yeah. So these uh, have to have the diode, which they do come with. Come with this little baggie. As you can see, when charged as a battery, you must connect the diode in series on output positive. Otherwise, it will be burnt for backflow of current. So you can see they provide you with an RB085T double diode, which you put in series with the positive output of the power supply, which goes straight to the positive of the battery on the center terminal which you can put both the the left and the right ends in parallel you might get a little bit better but yeah just the diode so yeah there's that RB085T um, so yeah it's a little bit more annoying because you have to have a heat sink depending on the current and you have to solder it up so that's probably why the other person ordered one of these, because it, it has included. Um, as to whether or not the model that you're looking at has it included, I'm pretty sure they all uh, specify um, whether it needs requires the diode or not. And it'll show like this being included in one of the pictures. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the comparison. So uh, I'm going to move on to a teardown. So stay tuned.